We're back out here in wonderful Southern California. Late summer, looks like we actually might get some rain today. Last time Jeffrey was with me, it did the same thing. It kind of got, you think of SoCal, it's always sunny, but for some reason when this dude shows up, ends up getting heavy overcast. But maybe this time we'll end up with another 12 pounder somehow magically just stumble across it. But anyways, I want to introduce or reintroduce one of the most popular working class zero baits that I killed last year. I'm bringing it back from the dead, but it's the Citizen. We have the new Citizen 7 and the new Citizen 6. A lot of upgrades to the bait. We're gonna go over it in this video, talk about how to rig and what kind of setup you should be throwing them on. First thing first, let's go over the details of the upgrades of the the new baits. Now I always believe that there's always room for improvement on baits. There's no perfect bait. As time goes on, you're gonna find little things that can make a bait better and better and better. So that's what we're trying to do here with the new Citizen. Something that is loved that's on the battle shad is the head case harness. So I've added it in on the Citizens without getting the price up too much. It's gonna increase, but your bait is gonna last so much longer now because you have the head case harness. It's hard to see here, but there is a new detailing on the baits. Changes the way that the light is gonna kinda reflect off of them while the bait's coming through the water. Little detail up here on the head as well. Same thing, those are just cosmetic upgrades. But I've also redesigned the internals here so that you get a little bit, you can't see it, but it's inside the bait. You get a little bit more meat around the hook so that the bait's gonna last longer there. You get a little bit more meat up on the back. Meanwhile, the bait will still collapse around the hook just how it should. So baits should be more durable in the grand scheme of it. But you gotta be realistic. This is still a soft plastic bait. They are gonna tear up, especially if you're catching fish. The plastic has stayed the exact same as the previous version, but I've changed the process in which the plastic is made. Not to get too far into the depths of this, but now the factory's using microwaves, just like I always did at home. They're going in microwaves and being poured that way. It sounds probably nuts to some guys, but I firmly believe that there is a difference on how that, that plastic is brought to temp so that it can be put in molds. And it changes the performance, it changes the, the texture of the bait, how durable it is. And there's a learning curve to all this stuff. Like I never would have thought bringing the material to temp would potentially change stuff. And I'm sure guys are gonna argue against it. Ah, it doesn't matter. I think it does matter, so that's what's important. And so that's what we're doing now. And I'm so stoked on how the baits are turning out. Just for size comparison, we're gonna have the seven and the six. There's a huge difference in these two baits, just in one inch. I personally really prefer the seven, but there is a time and place for the six. Let's go ahead and go over the rigging process for the seven and for the six. When I first designed these baits, I designed them around very specific hooks because there wasn't any other options out there. At that time, for the 10 aught, which is for the seven inch Citizen, there was only a half ounce. There wasn't these other weights that are existing now. And then same for the six. There was only the six aught quarter ounce. I still rig the baits using these sizes because that's what the bait was built around. When you start adding heavier hooks, the weight itself being heavier, it starts pulling on that plastic more and it tears your baits up quicker. Way around it, if you want that bait to get down more, is you just add in tungsten nails. Sell them on the site. You can buy tungsten nails pretty much anywhere, but tungsten nails to get that bait heavier, running deeper if that's what you want. I always stick with the original weights that they were designed with so that I don't destroy the baits faster than they should be. Okay, I'll open up that pack. We're just gonna go ahead and get rid of that spring right there. We don't need it. The head case harness has this screw eye right here. You can turn that. You can take it all the way out, just like with all the other head case harnesses. So I'm just gonna have this right there. It's open on this side. It's an open eye screw eye. Of course, I wasn't prepared. Hold on. I need my other pliers real quick. 
There they are. Just like I talked about in the tyrant video, I like these little these little pliers right here, these crescent pliers. They're wonderful for getting inside these screw eyes. I'm gonna just take that screw eye. I'm just gonna open it up just a bit. Not a ton, you don't need to open this thing way up. I even opened that up probably too much. But you take the eye, the hook, and you just feed it on there. Boom, I'm gonna wrap around that, and then I'm just gonna pinch it shut. And boom. Now this is not gonna come out. Like it's not gonna pop out of there. Then it's just as simple as lining up. Let me backtrack, I got ahead of myself. I always bend this hook out a little bit. This is standard issue now at this point, I think, for my videos, but I, I still, for the for people that haven't seen this before, I just bend that hook up just a little bit. Just a little. I do that so that it actually sticks up a little bit off the top of the bait. So I get a better hook up. Actually grabs the skin of that mouth as it's coming out and then sticks it in there. So I just lined it up. The belly is open on these baits. I'm just gonna push that hook down into that slot. Boom, popped in. You can always feel around on the back. Like, well, okay, where's the very back of that hook? Feels to be right about there. I'm gonna push down up here on this head, come forward, and then I'm just gonna come right up and out the top. It's right there, come on, baby, there it is. Right up and out the top of that bait. Beautiful. And then when you look at it from the side, it's pretty low profile. Don't think I have much of a stretch face going on. That's one thing we don't want to do. We don't want to rig it so that the face is all stretched out, all like this on a hook. We don't want it to be too bunched up because it's going to change the action. So you want to make sure you kind of find that little sweet spot on that bait where it comes up and out the back, just like that. So it's sitting in there all nice and nestled, just like that. And then like I was saying, that hook it's pointed up just a little bit, just a little bit. That's clean, that's super clean. I typically would button it down a little bit more, so let me, let me go ahead and demonstrate that. I'm gonna just crank it in a few more cranks all the way through. Oh, we're getting tight there. It gets more difficult as it gets in there. Not a ton, but it does help, so I'm gonna Look at it again, line it up. And you've noticed I've already poked two different holes in the back of that bait now. It might wear out over time there, but let's go ahead and right up and out of the back. Boom. So all I did was I just pulled that eye in just a little bit more. It's not that much, but that could be the difference between catching fish and not catching fish. Now, if you want this size bait or the six inch version of it, and you're fishing it, and you wanted to get it down a little bit further, all you need to do is grab some tungsten nails and put them in the bait. I always rig them almost in the exact same spot. Now these are 332nd ounce ones. That's what I prefer. It really seems to add that weight that you want, but you can play around with it. Get 16th ounce ones, get smaller ones if you want, if you just want it subtle to get down. But typically if I want the bottom, I want the bottom. I want to get down there. I want to be able to pick up the pace and scoot it across the bottom. So I'm going to add 332nd ounce nails right here pull it in just like that yeah you get that little nub there but but overall that's that's the new citizen without getting into some crazy stuff i'm not sure what what more i can upgrade for a made in the usa hand poured bait there's something about it. that's something i believe in my soul is i, I don't like making American workers compete against, you know, places that have a much lower standard of living. It's important for me to keep baits made in the USA. And so I'm trying to push the envelope on production, keep prices as low as we can. But I mean, there's a huge difference when an American worker is getting paid their salary versus somewhere else. So that cost is all real. It's not an extraction of wealth that goes somewhere else in the world. You can directly see it around you, see it in the faces, see it the people we work with. Like, it's important to me, and I wanna keep pushing in that direction. Not to throw anybody under the bus. If that's their goal, they wanna just keep outsourcing American labor or whatever that is, that's, that's fine and dandy, but they're just two totally different products. 
have American labor versus relatively cheap labor. This is the result of it. Trying to revamp an already proven bait. Like, I mean, dude, this is what's shocking is uh, not to go off on a totally different thing. The Citizen has actually caught more big fish for guys than other baits. Maybe that's accessibility that they were, how accessible they were. They're not gonna be as accessible this time around. So we're gonna keep, keep it semi-limited even though they are being made in the factory. But this bait has performed really well for a lot of guys. It's still soft, like the guys wanted, but it's a bit more durable because of the new, manufa new manufacturing process. So that's the gist. I don't need to ramble on any further. I've already kind of gone long enough, but you rig the six the exact same way you rig the seven. There's no difference. You have the head case harness, you have the screw eye, it's in there, you rig it the same way. All of them are gonna come in the package, turn sideways like that. What you have to do is turn it so now it's that way. And that's how you rig it in. And then you can button it down however you prefer. This is how it comes, it's probably gonna be good for most guys. It's gonna serve them well. I do like to tighten it up just a smidge. Maybe it removes some of that play up here in the hook. Guys love to try and put bigger hooks in the six. It's not designed for that. It's not designed to go throwing an ADOT three quarter ounce hook in it. The plastic in the back, it just can't sustain that over a long period of time. The whipping, how guys like to whip cast and stuff like it tears up the baits. You have to be very deliberate in your movements and how you're casting or skipping. There's none of this especially with super heavy hooks. So keep that in mind when you're fishing the baits. They are designed around very specific hooks. Six aught, quarter ounce, 10 aught on the seven inch, half ounce. So keep that in mind. Let's get up, start going over the setup and then we'll get into some fishing. And I'm just gonna rig this guy up uh, on the rod. I'll go over the setup afterwards, but I tie the same knot on every single bait. It's important to know that you're tying to the eye of the hook. You're not tying to the screw eye of the head case harness. You're tying to the eye of the hook. So go ahead and put the line through once, twice, pull, create that loop. Yeah. Wrapping six times. And I'm going back through the loop I created and this little V. It's too hard to probably just tell right now. Wetting the line. I come back up through this loop. Now this is a twist my dad's like, I never taught you that. Maybe I put it on myself. I come back up and I cinch it down. Cut off that tag end pretty tight. Buttery looking little knot right there. So for the six inch Citizen, it's a pretty light bait. So you don't need a, a rod that's overkill for it. I think you're, you're gonna be in your medium heavy style swim bait rods. Something that has a relatively fast action. It has a backbone to it. So you can really drive that beast hook home. Cause you need to be able to really set the hook, get that plastic to move and get that hook penetrating inside of their mouth. This size bait, six inch size bait, the Citizen, I'm gonna fish it on a 200 size reel. 6.3 to one, that's the gear ratio on it. I don't wanna be burning the baits, but I also don't wanna be crawling them. I want that tail kicking and just a nice steady retrieve. I'd, I'd say it's in like medium to slow or slow to medium, however you wanna say it, but somewhere right in that little, that little mix. Line rating, 15 to 20 pound. That's my recommendation. This is probably 15, it may be 17, I forgot. It's right in that ballpark. If it starts breaking off, then I'm gonna be like, oh, it's probably 15. But anywhere in that 15 to 20 pound fluorocarbon, whatever you're comfortable with, bigger bait, I'd obviously recommend going up. But on the smaller bait, as long as your rod's stiff enough and you're not getting that stretch out of the fluorocarbon, it should be enough to drive that hook home. And that's a, that's a big thing, is making sure you can really get that penetration going. I fish it on the 110 varial handle with the foam flat knobs, the EVA foam flat knobs. And that's just a, a lighter setup for a smaller reel. Swim bait rod, that medium heavy power, somewhere in that seven foot nine to eight foot is 
probably totally good for most dudes. This is 710. I think it's right in that realm. It could be a little bit shorter if you need to like get in and like skip it in tighter locations. Smaller baits, that's what a lot of guys are, that's the application they're using it for, or they're just fishing out here in open water and grass. But this size bait, you don't need to overkill it. Even then, that's probably a big rod for a lot of guys. That's what I run for the six inch size. And then seven inch, on the seven inch, I'm gonna step up to a 300 size reel. Again, six three to one. 110 handle. Now I have the normal flat knobs right there. Just gives me that full grip. 20 pound test. And then we're gonna have a heavy power swim bait rod. This one's eight foot three. Same thing though. You want it to have enough of a backbone. Have a tip, but enough of a backbone so you can really drive that hook home. The six three to one, the line rating, that pace is what I find to be just an overall great swim bait setup. It's almost identical as the Tyrant. All I'm doing is changing the power of the rod, but the actual reel setup, I'm super familiar with how that, that reel feels as I'm retrieving a bait so I can know what adjustments I need to make in order to, depending on the bait I'm fishing. I'm kind of fumbling with the words on it, but I keep things relatively consistent. If I can get away with this size bait, which is in that two and a half, three ounce range, on a 300 size reel, still get it out there. That's my like home. I can fish that setup, that reel and everything all year long. It's probably why I prefer the seven inch a little bit more too. It just is like feels home. I'm not using a lighter rod. That's what's on the six inch, but it's important in my eyes to kind of keep things as consistent as possible. Even like to the rods, like all the rods have the exact same handle length, dis despite them being slightly different powers and slightly different lengths, the handle themselves are all, I keep it the same. So it all feels the same. So going to the 200 size reel for the six inch bait gets a little bit outside my wheelhouse, but that's what I gotta do. Sometimes they want that six inch over the seven inch. That's what you gotta do. But anyways, we should get to fishing, see if I can actually catch something, even though my gut is saying no, maybe it'll happen. Maybe we'll pop another 12, just randomly stumble across another 12 where I lose my shit in the front of the boat. Like, ah! or I go, summertime in SoCal, bro. Couple nibbles, couple follows. Mm. But we're not gonna know until we try. So let's get after it. Let's try it. Hopefully it's first cast doesn't happen. I never know. Hopefully I don't backlash. Dragonflies running into the line. There's a very deliberate action to the bait. Like guys will want to end up burning the bait. It's not a high in the water column bait. It's like, there's your action. You start burning it, you're gonna blow it out. It's very, you can go slow and get that tail kicking, and you can go a little bit faster, get that tail kicking. But if you're burning it, you're gonna blow it out. It's not a high speed burning it across the, the, the surface of water. It's not to stay up above the grass. There's other baits for that. This is, you get in the shit, you fish it through the shit, slow, slow to medium retrieve, that's the pace. If it's going and throwing it out here and then I'm expecting to burn it out, like, it's not that way. If you just want to do little rips, yeah, it's gonna blow out and roll on size. That might trigger some bites. It's designed just to be slow, slow, medium, methodical retrieve, just straight, straight shot it. If you want to burn it faster, you gotta put more weight in it so it keels it. This is right now just rigged on that quarter ounce. So if you want to fish it faster, you're going to have to put more weight in it so that it keels the bait better. It's basically like a, a two trick pony. Go through anything relatively at like a, a mid range slow speed, but it excels at that. And that's the thing is like, it does it really well. There's so much. Oh my God, dude, one of them bit it, but he was just like coming with it. I was just getting ready to say, there's so much life out there, but they ain't touching it. And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, but I want to see where he touched it at. Cause he may have just tail grabbed it or some shit like that. 
Could have been a little guy. Nope, right there. Teeth marks right there. So he didn't suck it all the way in. He just, you can barely see him, but they are right there. Damn. Caught me slipping, dude, talking shit, and he got me. Well, pretty much over it. Today was an absolute dud. But I went over the reintroduction of the citizen. It's a good bait, a lot of improvements. It's just not panning out today. So that's how it goes sometimes. Fishing, not catching. I'm done. I'm burnt. I'm going home. <laughs>